In this video, we're going to talk about how we can use equivalence classes to form partitions. Now, a partition is just a way of carving up a set. So suppose we have a set called A, and let's represent this set using a rectangle. And we can carve up this set into multiple regions. So let's say we carve up, carve up the set into something like this. And so uh, elements falling within this region will form the subset A1. So A1 will be a subset of A, and then this region will be A2. A3, A4, and A5. And then we can define a set called S containing all of these subsets. So A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. And then this set S will be a partition of A. And it's called a partition because for every single element of A, so for every single element X of A, we can be sure that X will be in exactly one of these subsets. So if X is an element of A2, you can be sure x will not be in any other subset. And we can be sure that for every single element x of the set A, it will belong in exactly one of these subsets. And so that's what a partition is. It's ju really just a way of carving up a set such that every single element in your original set will belong in exactly one subset. And here's a quick example to illustrate the idea of a partition. So suppose A is a set consisting of the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. We can construct the set S, consisting of the sets 1, 2, 3, and 4. So S is a partition of A because you can see that for every single element in A, it will belong to exactly one of the sets in S. And so that's why S is a partition of A. And it's really that simple. So this is just a quick example to illustrate the idea of a partition. Now that we know what a partition is, now we can take a look at how we can use equivalence classes to form partitions. And so, once again, we start off with a set A. Using this, we can form an equivalence relation. And then now I'm going to claim that the set S, defined in such a way, so it is the set of all equivalence classes you can generate using this uh, equivalence relation. Now I'm going to claim that this set is actually a partition of A. So I'm going to claim that this set is actually a partition of A. And in order to do this, what I need to show is to show that for any arbitrary element of A, so for an arbitrary element of A called X, I need to show that X will belong to exactly one of the sets in S. So you can see S is actually a set of sets. It's a set of equivalence classes, and each equivalence class is a set. And then in order to show that S is a partition of A, we need to show that this for this arbitrary element of A, it will belong to exactly one of the sets in S, because going back to the definition of a partition, recall that in order for this set S to be a partition, every element in A must belong to exactly one of the sets in S. And so that's what we're going to prove. Now to complete our proof, we first start off by noticing the fact that X is a member of the equivalence class of X. And we know that this is true because in order for X to be a member of this set, x must be related to x, and we know that this is true because r is reflexive, because we know that r is an equivalence relation. And we also know that this set, the equivalence class of x, is a member of the set s, because s contains all of the equivalence classes. And so what this shows is that for this arbitrary element x, it must belong to one of the sets in, uh, in s. So all we know right now is that x must belong to at least one of the sets in s. We still don't know if it's exactly one of the sets. It could be in, it could be in one of uh, two of the sets in S. But in order for S to be a partition, X must be in exactly one of the sets in S. So we've completed half of our proof at this point. We've just shown that X must be in at least one of the sets in S. Now the next step we need to do is to prove that X must be in exactly one of the classes in S. Now we can complete the second half of this proof by supposing x to be a member of class A and x to be a member of class B. Now in order to show that x must be in exactly one of the sets in S, we need to show that if we know that this statement is true, then this implies class A must be equal to class B. So what this means is that if x is a member of these two classes, then it must be the case that these two classes are actually the same thing. So it's impossible for x to be in two different classes. So we're going to start off with this statement, and then we're going to try to prove this statement. So let's get rid of this. So right now at this point, we only know that these two statements are true. So if x is a member of class A, this means x is related to A. 
by the definition of an equivalence class, this must be true. Same for this case, so if x is a member of class B, then x must be related to B. Also we know that R is symmetric because R is an equivalence relation. So we also know that A must also be related to x. And since now we know that A is related to x and x is related to B, this implies A is related to B because we know that R is an equivalence relation, so that's why R is transitive. So these two statements will imply A is related to B. And now we're going to invoke the result that we proved in our previous video. In the previous video, we proved that class A is equal to class B if and only if A is related to B. So what this means is that if we know class A is equal to class B, then this must be, then this immediately implies A is related to B. If we know that A is related to B, then this immediately implies class A is equal to class B. So right now we know A is related to B. And so this immediately implies class A is equal to class B, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. And so this concludes our proof. So we've just proved that X, not only will X be in at least one of the uh, sets in S, we've also just proven that X must also be in exactly one of the classes in S. And so this effectively proves that S is a partition of A.